Well, I mean, we got here a picture of Zenit, yes, at their match with SK, which is one of their Moscow rival, um, one of their more serious Moscow rivals. Zenit really is completely balletic. I mean, they're just rather like watching Latin American football, I would imagine, and they're fantastic to watch. And they won, so um, alongside the fact that it was this, even for me, interesting football, the, the stadium is absolutely beautiful because it, it's, it has a view out across the city and you can see important buildings, two churches particularly, so the Prince Vladimir Cathedral and the St Catherine's Church, you can see alongside the background. It was a fantastic day, sort of, you know, an April day, very clear. And then there was all this sort of ground enter entertainment, which is completely not planned because they body search everybody when you go in and you're supposed to sort of, you know, show them your bags. But somehow people had smuggled in all these firecrackers. So when Zenit scored a goal, they just let off all these firecrackers. And this, so this shows the sort of Battle of Berodino panorama of all the firecrackers. And I was up in the stand with these hard-nosed journalists. Um, but... When they scored the second goal, I mean, even they were high-fiving everyone. I mean, there's a sort of sense in which, you know, there is, it's completely synthetic. I mean, everybody sort of says it's all Gazprom money, which is absolutely right. It's an international team. Petersburg, Leningrad wasn't a really big football place back in the Soviet past. But at the same time, it really has got a sort of city authenticity about it, which was interesting. So that was one of the kind of memorable things that I did. And then otherwise, I mean, you know, amongst the other traditions, I mean, we've got a picture here of somebody promenading, for example. And so one of the points I've made in the book is that whilst Leningrad as Petersburgers aren't all that keen on walking, they are very keen on promenading. So that this sort of, I mean, almost like a passaggio in Italy. I mean, it's not as ritualised as that, but there are certain places where people would choose to be out showing off their clothes. It's not as dressy as Moscow, but here's a kind of young woman who's matched her dog wear to her um, scarf and her boots, so she's you know, sort of nicely coordinated. She's talking on her mobile telephone and um, very absorbed in herself, as it were, but yet having chosen this place also by, by the writer's house. So this is kind of a place with a certain heritage, and she's right outside the back of the Russian Museum. So this is sort of an, a, a place in the centre of the city and people you know, have, engaging in a certain relationship with it. And I, there's a food picture. So we have some Leningrad patisserie in... This particular shop, which has also actually been published by an Italian design magazine, but this is a children's party selection. So the Leningradsky Nabor, so the Leningrad selection, and those buttercream things with the twirls on it are just very typical of the place. And you get them in other Russian cities, but they're seldom as elegant and very much associated with, with it. And then, I mean, this one I particularly like because I just like the very typical outside of the neoclassical building and this sort of rather humble food kiosk beside it. And so it's the way that these um, informal, if you like, selling things, I mean, obviously this has to have a license, it has to be permitted by the city, but it's not the type of kiosk that the city actually likes. They prefer sort of permanent places. They've been trying to efface these um, and force out these sort of small, small traders. And thank God they haven't quite succeeded because people keep talking about European, but to my mind, this is a much more European photograph than the sort of shopping malls, um, which could be anywhere.